So you just created the perfect thumbnail for your YouTube video. You did it in Photoshop and it's a PSD file. And now you need to export it to a JPEG or a PNG or a GIF. Um, and while you're at it, you'd also like to create multiple versions of it uh, with different dimensions because you plan on sharing it on social media like Twitter, like Facebook, like uh, Instagram. Uh, and you want to do it as quickly and painlessly as possible. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do that automatically. If that's something that interests you, you know what to do. Stick around. So in this video, I thought I'd do something a little bit different and I'd share a power tip, a behind the scenes look at one of the cool uh, facilities that I use that I am sure will benefit you if you are unaware of it. And it's easy to do. So let's take a look at it. All right, so within Photoshop, and, and here's what I'm talking about. Here's my thumbnail. This is, this is gonna be very meta because I have my, my thumbnail for this video here. And over here, you can see the output files and to show you what I mean by automatically, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to change the background. I'm going to turn off blue and have a clear background. And as you can see, they all automatically change. I'm going to put a green background on and any change I make automatically renders my output files. And in this case, I have this one. I've, I'm calling this a Facebook one. I'm calling this a Twitter one. You can choose the name. They're all JPEGs. And this is just the default one. So again, this is a PSD file and I am rendering out JPEGs because that's what I wanted to do. But, all right, so let's take a look at how that's done. It's real easy, real simple. First things first, uh, you are going to need to turn on the, uh, the uh, generate image assets, right? I have it turned on and that's gonna do it. That's 50% that's, that's of what you need to do. So once you have this on, on any image you're working on, it will attempt to generate the assets. The other part to make it work is this. Let's go full screen here and I'm going to pull this out so you can see what's going on. These are all my layers. Uh, at the very top, I've put pretty much all my layers, let me collapse this, in, uh, in here for the most part. And this is the visible layer. Uh, and how you name this particular layer is going to determine what's generated. And there's a syntax that you have to follow. And in this case, you're going to see that, let's see if I could pull it open. Let's go through it like this. All right, let's start from the beginning. So basically what I'm saying is here's the name of my file, instantly save an image uh, to multiple sizes JPEG. And what that does is it's going to render out the full file in, as a JPEG and the default is 90% quality. So I'm gonna get a 90% JPEG quality at the full size and resolution that this is saved at. This happens to be uh, 1920 by 1080, so that's what this is gonna be. The next thing is I add a comma because I want a second file, and I'm saying, hey, scale it 78.12%, and that's, that's part of the syntax, and then give it this file name. So I put a space, and I tell it what the file name is that it should be, and the extension and it'll render that one out. And also I put another comma, and now I'm saying scale this next one. I want a third file uh, scaled at 62.5% of the original, and here's the name I wanna give it, and it's also gonna be a JPEG. And by doing that, that's all I need to do. I, I followed the syntax, which in this case, I am just scaling it. Uh, in this case, I'm not. In this case, I'm scaling at 78%, this one's 62%. And doing that, let's see if I could do this. What happened? Here we go. All right, let's take a look at what that looks like. So when I open up, actually, let me move it over. There we go. So this one is the Facebook version. This one and it is the Twitter version. This one is the full size. And just for kicks, I'm going to show the file info. This one's rendered at 1920 by 1080. We're going to go backwards. This one's at 1500 by 844. And this one's 1200 by 675. And that's how easy that is. And so basically what I do when I'm creating projects is I usually just copy the previous file over essentially because I have a lot of other information here, background colors and fonts that I like to keep handy. Uh, and then I just change the name here and, you know, I change my file name and I also change 
the name of what I want to be rendered out. And, you know, that keeps this generate thing uh, flag checked. The next thing I'm going to show you is changing the... So this is bonus stuff. If that's all you wanted to see, you can go ahead and run with it. But incidentally, I'm going to put a list of the commands in the description below so that you uh, can can look at the various commands that I'm using. So here's, here's another example. I'm going to change the name to... Uh, to this, I'm just going to paste it because I already have it. Watch what happens. Boom. It renders it automatically. And so I created a GIF, a JPEG, and a PNG version. Let me pull that over. So this is the GIF version. This is the JPEG version. This is the PNG version. I didn't tell it to change the size, and that's why it looks like that. All right, next up, we're going to try to, we're going to change the dimensions. Um, I change the dimensions by percentage, but you can also change the dimensions by actual pixels or, or inches or millimeters. By default, if I don't put a value, it's going to do pixels. And so let's just do that. I'm going to click off of this. It's going to automatically render the three. And let's see what I did. I just, I named it file one JPEG. And then this one, this is the syntax. If you want to change the dimensions, you put the dimensions like a thousand by 500. Again, this one was originally 1920 by 1080. It's going to stay that way. This one, I said, change the dimensions to a thousand by 500. And this one, I said, change the dimensions from, to 500 by 250. Let's see what that all looks like. This is the original. And actually, I'm going to pull up the info for you. So 1920 by 1080. This one is 1,000 by 500. And this one is 500 by 250. Now, I, took, I chose arbitrary numbers, and that's something to be mindful of. And you can see there's some uh, problems with that. But it, it will, you know, uh, it'll screw up the aspect ratio. So you're going to want to make sure that if it's 1920 by, you know, 1920 by 1080, that you are scaling the uh, X and Y by appropriate amounts, by corresponding amounts. If I just arbitrarily choose numbers, uh, it's going to kind of compress and stretch my image, and that's not going to be desirable. But just for the sake of this demonstration, I wanted to point that out. All right, what else can you do? Fun, fun, fun. I'm going to bring this over here, and you can see that, uh, like I said, I'm going to include this in the description. Um, you could set the JPEG output quality. So basically your output could be anywhere from uh, 1 to 10, and that's going to affect file size, and it's also going to affect the quality of the image. You can also, oopsie, you can also uh, specify the quality in percentages. So you get a little more resolution, where here it's kind of like, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Uh, you know, if you're doing 1 through 10, here you could say, like, I want a 77% quality. The default, if you don't pass this parameter, is 90%. All right? So I'm going to show you two examples of that. The first one, we're going to use these numbers. So I'm going to create uh, file 1, 2, and 3. And this is how you apply the quality setting. It's just kind of concatenated to the back of the, the uh, file type. In this case, it's a JPEG. So let's do that. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to paste it. Move away. It's going to generate. And let's open it up and see what happens. So this is uh, file one, which was, I think I said, yes, it was uh, like the, the image quality was like 10% or something. Look at the file size incident, incidentally. It's 165.4. I'm going to go to file two where I gave it a image quality of seven. So you see now the size jumped up to 62.8. Again, I'm not messing with the dimensions. And I'm going to skip again. And here's the third one where I said that the uh, image quality should be pretty much 100%. Don't lose, you know, don't lose any data if, you, if possible. And uh, you can see that the file size jumped up to 1.6 megabytes. So yeah, you have control over that. Obviously, it's, you know, if you want a smaller file size, you might want to find this is like this is the tiniest one that I could create, and you know, it still looks pretty decent. But that's something you want to play with. You can also change the quality setting by percentage. 
I'm going to skip this one and I'm going to go on to this one, which is the same thing, but instead of just creating three by percentage, I'm going to create 10 files by percentage. So I'm going to cut and paste that into here. And as you can see, you can scale it upwards and instantly create all these different uh, files with varying quality settings. Let me get that file info up for you. And this is at 30% quality, 40% quality, 50% quality. And you can see that file size change as I switch pictures, 60% quality, 70% quality, 80% quality, 90% quality, 100% quality. Pretty neat. And for what it's worth, if uh, for PNGs, your options are 8, 24, and 32. The default is 32. JPEGs, incidentally, the quality setting uh, default is 90%. So, whoops. So let's go and take a look at creating you know, three PNG files and what that syntax looks like, at, uh, creating it with a uh, quality setting of 8, 24, and 32. There they are. So there's the uh, 8, 24 bit, and 32. Anyway, that's all I got. I hope you liked this video. I really wanted to do something different here. I wanted to share with you a little behind the scenes. I wanted you to kind of look over my shoulder and see a cool uh, tip that I've been using now for a few years, I think is really beneficial. And I hope it helps you as a content creator save some time in the whole content creation process. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Uh, also, let me know if you liked it and it was helpful to you. I'd love to know uh, if this type of video is helpful to you. Uh, Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notifications every time I post a video. And until next time, and most important of all, be kind to one another.